Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting this lightning scene. It's a subject that I've never painted before, but my friend Joy commented that she was having problems painting lightning, so I decided to give it a go myself. It's not the best, but it's actually quite satisfying to paint for some reason. I also decided to make it easy for myself by painting this in black and white, so I only need to think about the values. So while I'm masking off the sides of my paper, let me just show you the reference image that I'll be using for this painting. I chose this picture because of its simplicity so I can really focus on the values. Since the reference image is a bit more lengthy in height, I decided to shorten the area of my clouds and I also repositioned it so it's placed diagonally on the left corner of the page. I'm just drawing it out very lightly and loosely here as guideline. At the bottom, I also lined where I want the water to stop. I recently bought a masking fluid with a nice thin tip and I decided to use it to mask the area of the lightning. This is my first time using this masking fluid so I didn't really know how it will react, how it will dry and come off the paper in comparison to the masking fluids I've been using so far, but I decided to just eyeball the position of the lightning and draw it on with this masking fluid as the lines can be anything you want. I just intentionally made the lines jagged and crooked. I made one main line in the middle which is thicker and smaller thinner ones branching out. In terms of the colors, I'm just going to keep this very simple. Firstly, I'm going to use Graphite Grey by Daniel Smith, Lamp Black by Daniel Smith, as well as Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. I'm going to start off by using a medium to thin consistency of Graphite Grey, and I'm going to paint on the clouds at the top left corner. I'm starting out thin here because I can always build it up later and I'm applying it by putting full pressure off my brush so the edges of the areas painted looks a bit textured as the ends of my bristles where the barrel is is touching the paper. After that, I'm just going to keep building on the color using a slightly thicker consistency while the surface is still damp to create the cloud texture. I'm going to keep doing this until I reach the bottom of the cloud where I've outlined it, but as I get towards the bottom, I try to use a thinner consistency so the top will be darker than the bottom of the cloud. The shape of the cloud doesn't have to be accurate according to the reference image, I'm just trying to figure out the texture as well as the values placed for the clouds. Here you'll see me leaving a bit of negative space on top of the areas that I'm painting. This is to just separate the layers of clouds. You can also paint over it later if you don't like the difference in value, but for now having that space makes it a bit easier for me to separate those layers. At the moment, the colors of the clouds are fairly light and there's a limit to how dark I can paint this on by just using graphite gray, which is why I'm going to introduce lamp black so I can increase the contrast with the darker values. I'm just painting on top of the areas, especially on the top left corner where I want it to be the darkest. And as I reach towards the bottom parts of the clouds, I try to use a bit more water, but I'm still applying it the same way by tapping with my brush to get the uneven textured surface. I feel like I have enough details and textures for the clouds, so I'm going to move on to paint the rest of the sky. For this, I'm just going to wet the area of the sky until I reach the top part of the water. And I'm just going to wet the surface evenly using my large flat brush here. As you can see, even if I've waited for a long time and painted the clouds, the masking fluid was still a little bit wet in that thick section. So I don't know what was going on, but I just kept going and I tried to avoid painting in that area. 
Since the color of the sky is much lighter, I'm just using a thin consistency of graphite gray and I tried to spread out the color while the surface is still damp. I tried painting on the sides first because I want the area near the lightning to be much lighter to create the glow later on. I also want the bottom part near the water to be darker so I just add a bit more pigments there and I'm just going to let the color spread out on its own. As I'm voice overing this and reviewing the painting again, I realized that if you're looking at a reference image for the values only, it's better to use a smaller scale. Like now I'm looking at the thumbnail reference image and I can see that there's actually quite a large difference in value from the top part of the sky in comparison to the bottom and I didn't pick that up as I was painting this because if you're looking at an image from a large scale sometimes the gradual change in value is not as visible so I feel like this is something that I've learned which is to zoom in and out of your images up to a very small scale in order to get a clearer idea of the placement for the values which I unfortunately missed for this particular painting. At this point the paper was soaking in quite a lot of liquid so I'm going to leave the sky for now and move on to paint the land on top of the water. For this I use a thick consistency of lamp black while the surface of the sky is still wet. This way the color will travel outwards and blur out creating the effect of distant land or mountains or even buildings we're looking at from afar. While applying the black paint here, I try to vary the height so it looks a little bit more random and this way I can layer on other details in front of it. And after this first layer, I'm just going to dry everything off with a hairdryer to make the process quicker. At any point, you can always go back to the previous elements you've painted to balance things out or if you feel like you need to fix certain areas. Now going back in with lamp black, I'm going to layer on a bit more detail in front of the blurry land that I've painted and dried off. I don't want the land to be the main focus so I'm not going to paint this with too much detail. I'm just going to paint straight lines varying in height and layer it on as I go to create a little bit of depth. As I get to the right hand side here you can see that I was running out of paint so the color is much more transparent but that's okay I'm just going to leave that out to dry and I'm just going to layer on more of the same shapes on top of that and this will just create the perception of depth. Next I'm going to paint on the water. I switched back to my flat brush here and I started out by mixing the graphite grey as well as the lamp black. This is not necessary, I just didn't know what I was doing but you can also just use graphite grey because it's always better to start with a slightly lighter value. So here I'm placing my brush horizontally so it's a bit easier to create the lines and I'm painting this using a straight horizontal motion just on the left and the right corner while leaving a little bit of space in the middle. Then with a thinner consistency of graphite grey and a really dry brush load, I'm going to paint on thinner lines in that white area. This flat brush has soft bristles, so if I use a lighter load, I can bunch the bristles together at the tip and this will make the tip really thin and it'll be much easier to paint on the horizontal lines. Now I'm going back in with a darker value of lamp black and I'm going to repeat the same steps again by painting horizontal lines from either sides. As you can see, if there are some white space left out, it's completely fine. This will just add to the texture of the water. The paper is quite wet now and I still feel like I need to layer on more detail so I'm just going to quickly dry it off with a hair dryer. So you can see after it's completely dry, the black is faded again. So now I'm going to layer on more lamp black. This time I'm using an even lighter brush load so the lines can become even finer. And just like before, I'm starting with the corners on the left as well as the right. Thank you. 
As I get towards the middle, I've mostly ran out of paint on my brush which leaves me with a very dry brush load but this is a good chance for me to create some dry brush textures for the water for added detail. Now I'm going to go back to paint the land. I'm using a thick consistency of lamp black and I switch to my detail brush so it's a bit easier for me to paint smaller areas. I'm painting the same things again as I did for the background, but I alternate the height of the mountains or the hills so the ones at the back I painted earlier still peeks through. Here I'm just using a clean damp brush to soften parts of the edges because I find some edges are a bit too rough. Okay, so after this I just want to dry everything off because next I'm going to paint on the sky again. I'm just going to wet the surface using a bit of water. You can see that the water is a bit dirty from the black but it's completely fine. And I'm going to add on a bit more of those darker pigments, especially around the corners as well as the bottom of the sky. For the color, I'm going to use a mix of graphite gray and lamp black. It's up to you which one you want to use. I just find that if I use a little bit of lamp black, lamp black is quite staining so at least the paint won't really move too far. I'm putting most of the black surrounding the lightning but I do want to still use a little bit of this lamp black or graphite grey in a lighter consistency where the lightning is or else once we take off the masking fluid there won't be enough contrast between the lightning and the sky. Here I just want to take off a little bit of that excess paint where the brightest part of the lightning is so I'm just using my tissue and then I'm going to dry everything off with a hair dryer. Once you dry it off, the surface will become less textured and the colors will blend together and smooth out a bit more. Since the colors have faded around the water area, I'm going to paint on more lamp black. This time with a round brush and with a light brush load, I'm going to paint on more lines. This time I'm also going to leave out more negative space so the texture will be more pronounced. I'm not going to paint this on for the middle portion because I feel like the middle is dark enough. At this point when I was painting this, I was quite satisfied with the surrounding area so I decided to take off my masking fluid that has dried off. It was actually a bit difficult to take this off. Some parts were really sticking to the paper. I'm not sure if I used it the wrong way or maybe I just need to experiment with this masking fluid a little bit more. As I was taking off the masking fluid on the thickest part of the lightning, I start to see this outline being formed. I think this was because I used quite a watery load and the pigments ended up catching on the edges of the masking fluid and that's how the outline is being formed I'm guessing so I'm just going to go over this again using bleed proof white Here's another mistake I made. I applied the bleed proof white using this liner brush. I thought that using a liner brush would make it easier to paint on the details of the jagged lines, but it's actually more difficult because of the long bristles, so the lines become a little bit more smooth. And that's not what I want here, so I would suggest for you to use a brush which has shorter bristles like a round brush with a fine tip or just a smaller brush in general. Here I'm using a thin consistency of bleed proof white and I just want to glaze over that area to lighten it further just like how I took off the excess paint using tissue. 
This will hopefully make a layer of the cloud look like it's glowing from the brightness of the lightning. I'm also going to add some to this connection here where the thickest parts of the lightning is. Of course, this would be better if I achieved this while I was painting the background instead of glazing it over with bleed proof white, but I don't think I had enough brush control to do that and I need a bit more experience. I also felt like after looking at the reference image again, I actually need to add on the darker values, especially at the bottom part of the sky, as I mentioned earlier in this video. This way, the contrast and value will make the glow of the lightning pop even more. So just keep that in mind if you're going to try out the same composition. Anyway, getting back to the painting, here I decided to use a thick consistency of bleed proof white to go over the lines of the lightning again, this time with my small brush so it's a bit easier to create those jagged lines. I also added smaller, finer lines branching out of the lightning to add a bit more detail. This part was actually really satisfying to paint but I would reckon that with a darker background, it'll be much more satisfying to see the contrast of the lightning and the dark sky. Lastly, I just want to clean out this area where the lightning strikes. So I want to redefine the lightning and also clean out the outline. And that's pretty much it for this painting. I'm just going to go ahead and unmask the sides. Even though I don't feel like I did the photo justice, I still learned a lot from this painting. It was really fun to paint. Please keep the suggestions I mentioned in this video in mind if you're going to attempt the same painting so you can make the lightning look more striking. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be listed in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.